next speaker, um, I'm very excited to present um, or to, to bring forward, and it's um, Michael Greenwood um, from the Boeing Company. And Boeing is our presenting sponsor for today. So first of all, I want to say thank you to them. And it felt like a natural uh, to have Boeing um, speak today because of their um, growth and expansion in our area, which, as we heard earlier, is so important to our region. But before we get into the serious side, I just want to say, Graham, have no worries. I was an English and French major. And you might think that your child would never have a job with that major, and I have succeeded. I actually did start out as a business major, but I have to say my junior achievement high school classes were more interesting than my 101 business classes. So I did have to change. So there is hope out there for the workforce and the, the humanities. Go humanities. That's what I say, rather than go ducks or, or beavers. So there you go, my own personal piece. So um, this year has been fun for me with Boeing. Um, creating more relationships. We have a new board member from Boeing, Yvonne Mills, which I'm very pleased to have join us. Um, we also, I had the opportunity to see the Dreamliner, which was very exciting, and I wish I could ride on one for a real trip instead of just being in the, um, the hangar. And I also got to participate in um, a tour of the expansion, and the plant is so impressive. Um, and being a gold certified, um, a lead certified in gold, I don't know if no, all of you know what that means, but for a manufacturing organization, that is incredible. And I actually want to give a round of applause now because that is an amazing feat. And you talk about workplace and workforce um, happiness. I wouldn't say happiness isn't the right word, but contentment. And one of the things that makes such a huge difference in the new plant is the number of skylights and the daylight that comes into the plant. It's, it's amazing, and I think it's going to make productivity go up and a whole lot of different things. So with that, I will um, move on to introducing Michael, um, who leads the Workforce Management and Integration Aerospace Academic Alignment Organization. So I can't say that five times fast. So I'll let Michael talk more about that. And he's been with Boeing for over 23 years and has extensive experience in manufacturing, assembly, business management, finance, disability management, and union relations. And he's going to talk to us a bit about Boeing's programs and their workforce development and some of their public partner, uh, private partnerships um, with education for workforce development and growth. So help me in welcoming Michael. Well, good morning. What a great morning it's been. Hey, on behalf of the Boeing Company, it's my honor and privilege to be here at your event today, and I want to thank the Gresham Area Chamber of Commerce and Allison and her team for uh, inviting us here today. It's been great. Um, I think it's really important as we, we talk about workforce development that I give you an opportunity to kind of understand the big picture at the Boeing Company. So what I'd like to do is take a look at our agenda, see if I can So we're going to talk, and I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, but I think it is really important you kind of see that big picture. We're going to talk a little bit about the company structure at the corporate level, and we're going to kind of dive down to Boeing commercial airplanes, and then we're going to transition into the workforce development piece, kind of at the broader corporate perspective, bring it down to a regional perspective, and then talk about the, the, the site here in Oregon that Allison was just referring to. Um, some really good information. There's a video that speaks really to the people and the culture of the Boeing Company. So I really want to, I'm, I'm been assured that the video will play without any problems. It's really important we see that, so we'll, we'll find out here in a few minutes. Um, and then there's some fun facts about, you know, did you know in terms of the Boeing Company and the aerospace industry? And uh, if we've got time, I'll, I'll try to answer any questions you might have. It's okay to override me back there. Thank you. So a little bit about our history. Um, we are fast approaching our centennial, uh, which is quite a milestone for any company or corporation uh, across the United States. In 2016, we'll be 100 years old. Um, we started out uh, uh, as far as uh, a leading producer of military and commercial aircraft and have transitioned to, and you'll see this in the presentation, five or six uh, very significant models of Boeing commercial airplanes today. We'll talk a little bit about where those are produced at. So what do we do? We design, assemble, and support uh, Boeing commercial jetliners. We build defense systems, 
and uh, satellite and launch vehicles. We also integrate large-scale systems, uh, develop networking technologies and network-centric network solutions, and really provide financing solutions. And you'll see why that's so important as you look at our current backlog going forward. And also develop advanced systems and technology. Okay. So we think about the corporation at the global perspective. So we are located uh, around the world, uh, as you probably know. There are uh, really customers in over 150 countries. We have a, a revenue annually in 2011 of almost $70 billion. And when you think about our total backlog in 2011, it was over $300 billion in backlog. Partnerships, um, we have contracts with 22,000 suppliers around the, the world. Um, and we have partners globally that help support that. More than 170,000 employees um, at the corporate level. And uh, uh, as we look at company organization and the structure at the corporate level, headquartered in Chicago, uh, there are really five main tenures and, if you will, legs to the stool at the corporate level. We have Boeing Commercial Airplanes. We have Shared Services Group. We have our SSG, uh, our EONT, our Engineering Operations and Technology Group, and uh, our, our Finance Corporation. So let's talk about Boeing Commercial Airplanes, headquartered in Renton, Washington, um, but really with, with uh, locations all around the world, uh, $36 billion in revenue, and approximately 84,000 employees across the Boeing Commercial Airplanes uh, enterprise. Now that's significant, and I'll, and I'll give you a little bit of, of uh, trivia to kind of jot down. When we put this presentation together in June, it was not even 80,000, and so between June and September of this year, we've grown just within Boeing commercial airplanes, 5,000. But here's the fact that's really significant. In the last two years, we have hired over 15,000 new employees to Boeing commercial airplanes. Now that's not all increases in headcount, that's backfill for attrition and to support rate. So if you, you think about the big picture and what it would take to hire staff, onboard, train, and get a production ready 15,000 employees, it's been quite a feat. Okay, I think we're ready for the uh, checklist. Box two set, uh, set to 100%. Light with uh, heading is good with altimeter 3045. Parking brake is uh, Every pilot I've talked to loves flying the airplane. As soon as you strap that airplane on, it's like you're a part of it. I mean, it is the finest built airplane that I've ever had the privilege to fly. It's second to none in terms of uh, commercial aviation. And that exemplifies the quality of the people who work on this airplane every single day. I've been working for Boeing for uh, just going on right at 15 years. Since 1989. 23 years. Going on 25 years. Five and a half years now. It'll be 24 years in June. I remember flying a foam model airplane off of a treehouse my dad built. Ever since I was young, it was my bicycle, you know, playing with that, taking it apart, and trying to make it better. And then it moved to motorcycles and then cars. I like working with my hands. I like building things. I always have, ever since I was little. I, I think this uh, is something that is, is an art form. I couldn't have been four years old, but I, I remember to this day flying that airplane over and over again, making my dad run in the yard, grab it, bring it back to the treehouse. 
I had an auto mechanics class when I was a senior in high school. They showed up on Monday, didn't show back up till Friday. And he says, welcome back, time for the test. I missed two questions on his test. He got me a job out in town at a garage. He said, there ain't nothing I can teach you. I think working on airplanes, you get people who are fascinated by airplanes. When an airplane flies over, you can tell the airplane people because they look up. The actual spirit of Boeing is the men and women who build the airplane. The mechanics, the sealers, the plumbers, the electricians, the riggers, the functional test guys. These folks are the best in the world at what they do. And they will perform at whatever level is required to deliver the perfect airplane. The people who build all of these airplanes are incredibly smart, incredibly dedicated. I see a lot of artists and musicians working in these jobs, guys that like things that are concrete and, and, and practical, but at the same time, they maybe think a little bit abstract. There's a lot of creativity involved with these individuals. It's like an orchestra, you know, you've got all of these people moving in unison. A ribbon gun, bucket and bar, a drill motor. Those are the instruments, those are actual instruments. It's a crazy orchestration, putting this airplane together, joining it, and in three days, getting it ready for someone to actually put systems on. When you look at what it takes to put this product together, it's the people applying their hands, their knowledge, their desire to be successful to the actual parts, tools, and engineering of this product to bring it all together. Almost every, everything that we do is hands-on. It's all hand-driven, hand-done, hand-worked. It's built by hands. It's not a soulless machine that's building it. Every little bit, every little part, however small, is important to what we're doing. The Boeing Company is actually its own little city within a city. It's the world's largest building by volume. But you walk in here and it's it's really awe-inspiring, and the airplanes are awe-inspiring, and their stories tall. You know, when I think back on this program, it was exhilarating to build the first airplane. It's equally as exciting to deliver the thousands. There's no reason why we shouldn't see 2,500 or 3,000 of these large airplanes in service in the next 15 years. Some of these people that are here on the 777 have been here since the very first airplane. And they will be here for the thousands of airplanes coming through. It's pretty uh, pretty impressive to know that I'm working on a thousand of these airplanes. It's almost, almost unimaginable. There is no doubt in my mind this is one of the finest teams on Earth. There's a huge level of talent here at Boeing. It's an art and we're artists. We build the best airplane in the air and we intend to keep doing it. When you take pride in your work, you enjoy working. If there wasn't any passion building this airplane, it wouldn't get done. How can you not love building one of these? I love building airplanes. I like to come to work. I like to keep the cogs on this machine rolling. Every single one of those airplanes has a piece of everybody that's ever done any job on that. I came to the realization that I was a third generation aerospace worker. My mom, my dad, my cousins, my uncle. <laughs> I still want to be able to say to my friends or to somebody in the airport, that is something that I built. That is my airplane. It was nice to like say, hey, I put that wing on there. That one's mine. <laughs> and my, you know, I have kids, and when, they are, when we're driving in the car, we see an airplane flying up in the sky. What one's that, Dad? And I could have just pointed out to him and tell him, did you paint that? And I said, yeah, I did. There's a lot of mom and dads, a lot of brothers and sisters that are flying on these airplanes that are counting on you to do the best. When you can be part of a product like the 777 that changes the world, that allows regions, countries, companies to grow and prosper, that's huge. I think the ability to bring people face to face, handshake to handshake, hug to hug, has an immediate impact in the shape of the world. That completes the uh, four-inch start, and uh, we are ready to start 
engine number two. So pretty cool, and, and I meant to preempt that slide by talking a little bit about culture, and I know our previous speakers spoke to that as well. It's hard to describe culture on a slide. So you have to kind of get the people of the, of the organization to really express that, and I think that video does that pretty well. That is what makes the Boeing company so great, it's, it's people. Um, let's talk a little bit about where we're currently at in terms of uh, production rate and uh, the future. So I won't spend a great deal of time on this other than to point out a couple of highlights. One, um, all of the, the commercial uh, programs today are on increased rates from where they were in the last couple of years. 737, it's a number on a chart, but let me give you a perspective. 737 is produced in Renton. The uh, uh, facility here in Gresham for Boeing produces a significant number of parts for that. So 35, you see 35 on the chart. What does that really mean? Well, there's 20 work days really in a month, um, although we're working every day at, at most of our facilities. So every day, one and a half 737s roll out of the factory and fly out to delivery to our customer, going to two. So pretty significant, that's just one airplane model. So every day you can go in at the start of the shift and watch uh, a new airplane fly out the door. Pretty remarkable. The tagline on the bottom is also significant, that in the first half of 2014, we will be producing 30% more aircraft then than we are today. And today we're very busy. So it's a good time to be in aerospace. Um, next slide is gonna speak to really the factory skills that uh, we hire for. And I won't spend a great deal of time on these, but give you some sense. Functional test, those are the folks that actually um, ensure that the functionality of the aircraft after it comes out of final assembly is per spec and working correctly. Machine maintenance, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. Precision machining, a lot of that work happens at the uh, Gresham facility here. Quality assurance, tooling, electronics. We call it aircraft maintenance technician. You may recognize that as A and P, or the folks that work on the field in terms of delivery and then aircraft structural assembly skills. Those are the, that's the largest skill group we hire for in our factory. Those are all hourly skills. Make no mistake, engineering, technical, and other related skills are just as important and we're hiring for those as well too. Um, let's, let's take a look at current demographics. So there's good news here. The average Boeing employee age is 48. I turned 50, gonna be 51 this year. Why is that significant? Because for about six years there, I could just look, just go check the calendar and have however old I was, that was the average age. So we're moving in the right direction. Um, two really important points here, approximately a fourth, if you will, of Boeing's current employees are eligible to retire. Doesn't mean they will, but it's an important demographic stat. Our, our retirement rate is still only about 2.2%, but the last bullet is really telling. So in the next four or five years, over half our workforce will be eligible to retire in the US. So I tell a cute story here and I have to tell you because it's got a great tagline at the end. I was walking through the factory here a couple weeks ago and I looked across the way, I was totally distracted and I saw a group of, of what appeared to be young high school kids that were on a tour. And so I thought, oh, that's really great. And they started to walk towards me and as they got closer and closer and closer, I looked up and they all had Boeing badges. <laughs> so I went back to the calendar and yep, they look like kids, but they're really you know, our, our new workforce for the future. So, so we have some challenges around uh, our current demographics. Let's, um, let's talk about how we're trying to address that. The Aerospace Academic Alignment Team, a team that I've been involved with for several years, really we got uh, uh, three initiatives, our purpose, and I think this will resonate with some of the folks in the room, really building strong relationships with our community and technical colleges um, to really build a, uh, a, a pool of readily hireable candidates for not only Boeing, but for aerospace. We're also working, and I think we heard from our last presenters, the importance of industry, collaborating with academia, being at the table to develop these programs. We're committed to that. We, that happens here. Uh, in Oregon, happens in Washington, you'll see that in a few minutes, and really across the enterprise. If we expect academia to help us with our, our uh, challenges around finding skills, we need to help them build programs. 
Um, these partnerships with our institutions are really an important piece of our workforce strategy, and we'll, they have been, they are now, and they will be into the future. Um, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at those strategies. I'm gonna focus on a couple of these. I already mentioned the work with the community and technical colleges. One more time. There we go. Um, that's been very strategic for us across the enterprise here in, in Oregon, and you'll see in a few moments some of the schools that we're working with here, working with all the community and technical colleges up in the, in the Washington corridor, and really across, across the country. Um, a renewed sense of partnership in the K through 12 area. I, I, can't, I can't emphasize it enough how important it is that we continue to engage with K through 12 and really get kids, their parents, administrators, local officials, pretty much everybody really engaged in the idea that uh, continuing education courses or shop classes are more important now than maybe they've ever been. And so I, that's really an important strategy for us. Third one is about awareness and communication. I'm gonna come back to that in a moment. Internally, we're doing some things to make sure that our business partners understand the great work that we're doing. And the last bullet around collaborative partnerships with government, academia, industry, and our labor partners is really important. So let me go back really quickly to the third bullet. If there's nothing else that we do as an industry and as a community, the most important thing for us is to really focus on creating that awareness that manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, and the aerospace industry is alive and well. I mean, it is a great time to be in this business. Sharing that with kids and their parents and administrators and others to get them excited is really important for us. Not for maybe tomorrow, but for the day after and the day after that, right? So I wanted to kind of emphasize that. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about what, what Boeing's doing at the enterprise level. So we'll transition to what is Boeing doing today? So several things. and, and I'm. I could spend three hours talking about all the detailed programs across the enterprise. I'm not going to. Um, but FIRST Robotics is really um, an opportunity for us to be both financially participating with uh, volunteer time, really inspiring students to think about you know, engineering as a, a career choice. Um, my 13-year-old son uh, recently came home with a FIRST Robotics pamphlet on the counter. I was so excited to see him participating in that. First time he's ever thought about anything beyond a video game or his cell phone. So I was really excited about that. Partnering with America's Promise Alliance to support dropout prevention. Also the jobs for, for America's Graduates Program at the national level. Um, working with the uh, Sid the Science Kid. How many have heard about that? Excellent, excellent. Trying to change the perception really about uh, you know, our industry, about engineering and technical work. And uh, we do volunteer as a company, the employees that make up the Boeing company, thousands of hours around uh, mentoring for math and science and helping kids uh, learn and understand. One more. Okay. So everybody talks about STEM and everybody immediately goes to, you know, the engineering and technical skills. If you've never been in a modern manufacturing facility, including Boeing, it is loaded with science, technology, engineering, and math. Just a little bit of a plug for manufacturing. Um, we recently made a commitment to hire, and we did, over 1,200 interns into our factories and our businesses across the enterprise. In fact, I think the number was closer to 1,300. Um, working with many colleges and universities across the enterprise on access for students to really get in and for, for many kids who don't have an opportunity to go to college, whether it be a community college or a four-year institution, creating those pathways and opportunities for kids to really go to college. Um, one highlight here, and it's, it's around Washington, but I, I want to also kind of uh, put a plug in for the other states too. Many, many states, including Washington, have what they call the Center of Excellence for Aerospace and Advanced Manufacturing. The purpose of that is to really align industry, academia, government, and our labor partners to come together with, with all of the K through 20 institutions and really build unison and collaboration. And you'll see that in, in a slide coming up here, but I want to just 
kind of point that out that it's a critical part of our strategy. All right, so let's spend just a few minutes talking about what's going on in, oh, sorry about that, folks. What's happening in Washington? So when it comes to external workforce development in the state of Washington, um, working through the Center of Excellence for Aerospace, um, the Washington Aerospace Training and Research Center is a collaborative effort between Washington Community Colleges and industry to build foundational skills training programs. Um, been highly successful the last couple of years. Um, over 1,500 new Boeing employees and other industry employees have come through that center. Um, also in Washington, and you'll see some of this in, uh, in the Oregon slide as well, talking about K through 12, and I'm hoping this is something that we can spread across the enterprise. It's called a Core Plus curriculum, teaches kids basic foundational skills training, but then gives them a choice about whether to choose aerospace, medical, agriculture, marine, so they can kind of transition up that stackable certificate the important piece being that it gives kids foundational core skills that they can take wherever they want to go. And then apprenticeship, um, you'll see this again on the Oregon slide, uh, program for, for the Boeing Company in partnership with our labor union that's been around since 1935, currently offers uh, in Washington over a dozen programs, um, and it's four and five year apprenticeship programs. I happen to be a graduate of that. I would tell you that that four years I spent in that program, and not to take anything away from my undergraduate or my graduate work, I learned more in that apprenticeship program than I did going to college. Cannot emphasize the, the importance of apprenticeship. Um, and last but not least, um, how many have heard of uh, the National Association of Manufacturers Skill Cer Certification Program? Very few hands. So we have been pushing really hard, and it doesn't have to be the NAM model, but we believe that uh, em embracing and implementing what's already happening in the Midwest and on the East Coast, a national skill cert certificate program for K through 12 and grades 13 and 14 to give kids a solid foundation around what are their capabilities when it comes to reading, for information, locating information, and applied mathematics in the workplace, an area that we really struggle with finding um, job candidates that have those skills. Okay, um, I wanna talk a little bit about the Gresham facility. Um, employs approximately 1,750 people. Um, in the last year or so, they've hired um, over 150 new employees. They are recognized within our company as a center of excellence for advanced machining. Um, I'm sure the folks here at the table could give you some of the stats, but I, I'm pretty comfortable that every day, um, parts produced at the Gresham facility head north to the assembly uh, factories in Renton and Everett. Um, they are a critical part of our assembly process. Value streams at the site include engine mounts, gear boxes, landing gear beams, flap tracks, carriages, some aerospace terms here, sorry. Um, machine actuators, titanium side of body cords, and flight control systems. So I, I, I can't emphasize enough, some of the parts that get manufactured there are quite large, and, and the importance of that facility um, can't be overstated. So let's talk a little bit about external workforce development at that site. So partnerships with community and technical colleges um, former relationships with, there we go, Oregon Institute of Technology, Oregon State University, Portland State, Clark College, and Mount Hood. Um, a new uh, developing relationship with Portland Community College. Um, and so, again, as it is in across the, the enterprise, Washington, Oregon, those partnerships with the community and technical colleges are super important. So dive down a little bit deeper. Um, they too offer uh, an apprenticeship program model. Um, in, the, in the Washington model, I described up to a dozen different programs here at the Gresham facility. There's three main programs, either in place or underway. Machining, electronics and machine tech. There's currently 20 apprentices in the program. Um, they're, uh, that one more time. 
They have a high school tech prep program. It's a three-year program. The first year is a one month of basic skills. Remember, we talked about the importance of those foundational skills. Second year is a project-based experience that students go through. And the third year is job shadow. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but I can't overemphasize the importance of allowing students to really get a feel for what the workplace is like. Because until you really get out there and do it, you don't know. So a very successful program, 18th year that the Gresham facility has been supporting tech prep. Um, they also have a machining internship. It's a one month program. They work with uh, the four community college partner schools. Um, and they are working on a, setting up an assembly internship. Um, career fairs, they bring recent hires and graduates from tech prep or internship programs to talk, show videos, and show them hands-on tools and projects. And I think this is important, this last bullet. Same thing is happening um, at, many, at many of our, our sites working with K through 12, really inviting high school teachers, administrators, shop instructors, bringing them into the factory because for many of them, they haven't seen a modern facility in maybe a decade or so. Things have changed a lot. Giving, giving the instructors and the administrators an opportunity to see what our business is really like. Okay, so um, some fun facts. There are approximately 65 scheduled commercial jet flights per day. Pretty interesting. All right. So I know I went through that rather quickly. I hope you found the information uh, of interest, and I'd take any questions you might have. Okay, um, so Boeing does this. Now, Boeing has a lot of suppliers and organizations that work with closely with Boeing. Are they participating in these same programs? Or is there a requirement for them to participate in the same process? Are you, term, are you speaking in terms of collaboration with academia? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I would just tell you that um, we welcome more participation. There's a lot of suppliers that uh, are not participating, but many do. Absolutely. Yeah. That's really important um, that they also participate in the development of the programs because we really want them to also hire and recruit and be a part of the, the product that comes from these training programs. Yeah. Okay. It's too easy. <laughs> All right. Well, if there are no more questions, thank you for allowing us to be here today. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.